Welcome to Bible Prophecy Revealed with Grant Jeffrey. Welcome to Bible Prophecy Revealed. I'm addressing you tonight from the Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. This beautiful model of the city of Jerusalem as it was in the days of Jesus tells us that the city of Jerusalem was a very, very small place. And all of the incredible events took place in an area of less than about 150 acres. That city of Jerusalem is the center of the concerns of mankind. I encourage you to come down to the Holy Land experience and bring your family. Short of going to Israel, it's the closest you can get here in North America. I want to share with you today a program that deals with the coming world government surveillance system. It's called Project Echelon. In the research that I've done over the last 20 years, I've found that the Bible tells us clearly not only that there will be a dictatorial global government in the last days with an antichrist leading it, but on top of that, the Bible tells us clearly that this government will exist in the last days, rule the entire planet, but it tells us it will have total surveillance possibilities of the complete population. For example, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, this is what the angel said. And he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse or different from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. We find in Revelation that we're also told in Revelation 13 that this kingdom will be a true global government, that the, all the multitudes and nations and kindreds of the earth are going to worship this Antichrist. But now John was given some details of prophecy that no other prophet in history had ever received. In Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17 and 18, talking about the global dictator, the first beast, who's also called the Antichrist, and his partner, the false prophet. Both of them are animated by Satan. The Bible tells us that the Antichrist, when he begins to rule, will take over the ten nations superstate of the revived Roman Empire in Europe and the Mediterranean. It's interesting because all of those nations that were part of the Roman Empire in the days of Jesus Christ are now re reunited once again. For example, we have the 27 nations of the European Union, and in the southern part of the Mediterranean, all of North Africa and the Middle East include nations that are associate members like Israel and Egypt and others of the European Union. The Bible tells us that this Antichrist is going to, first of all, he is going to be a friend of Israel or pretend to be. When he takes over the ten nations of the revived Roman Empire, he then uses war and peace treaties to actually take over the entire globe for the first time in human history. He's going to make a seven-year treaty with Israel. And when he makes that seven-year treaty, he's going to guarantee Israel's security, trying to achieve the peace that has been so elusive between both the Arabs and the Jews for 4,000 years. When he does that, Everyone's going to think he's a Messiah. And for the first three and a half years, he rules as a Messiah. But when he goes down to Jerusalem, motivated by Satan, he goes to the temple, and he's going to stop the daily sacrifice. And when that happens, somebody, probably a Jewish believer, is going to assassinate him with a knife wound to his head or throat. When he dies, and he truly will die, Satan is going to satanically resurrect him almost in parallel or imitation of what the prophecy said about Jesus. And then, when he is resurrected satanically, he arises and he's no, no longer a Messiah figure. Satan will absolutely take over his body. He's going to demand that every human being on earth at that time, halfway through the seven-year tribulation, from that point on must worship him as God. If they do, they will continue to be able to buy and sell, to work and live. If they refuse to take the mark of the beast and refuse to openly worship the Antichrist as God, the Bible tells us 
that those people will be beheaded. The only other option for those people in the tribulation living as new tribulation believers in Jesus will be to head to the hills and try and live through the balance of three and a half years until Armageddon. Remember the scripture does tell the, those people at that time, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And so the Bible's warning, don't ever take the mark of the beast. Fortunately, the mark of the beast, 666, will not be instituted until three and a half years after the rapture resurrection. It is only during the last three and a half years leading to Armageddon that the mark of the beast is introduced as a total population control system. And here's what Revelation 13, 16 to 18 says. He, this is the false prophet, caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. Now, the mark of the beast will be applied to the right hand or forehead. The word in the Greek that is used for mark indicates that it will be visible, but also there's the impression of something that is in fact also beneath the skin. The Bible tells us that in that time that the right hand or forehead will be used. And some people have asked, well, why would either be used? Why not just one of them? Why would it be a choice? Well, there are some people that due to accident obviously don't have a right hand. And for ease of making the system universal, apparently the Antichrist and the false prophet will institute during the last three and a half years this system. It will involve digits. 666. Now we're already moving toward a cashless society. The Bible indicates that surveillance in the tribulation period will be beyond anything Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin or Mao Zedong of China ever even imagined. It will be impossible, basically, for anyone living in a civilized area to escape the police of the Antichrist, and they will be beheaded if they, in faith, refuse to take this mark. There's one logical thing that I think I should raise, and that is that the fact that the Bible says in Revelation that those who take the mark of the beast are going to be condemned without exception to the lake of fire logically suggests that the mark of the beast will not be forcibly imposed on babies or young children. Just as God asked for people of the age of accountability to accept him as their savior, but that those that are below the age of accountability, like David's son who died after David's sin with Bathsheba, and the Bible tells us in 2 Samuel 23 that that baby definitely is in heaven, we know that God wants adult individuals of adult mind to make a decision. And I believe the Antichrist, empowered by Satan, wants the same thing. And therefore, it will not be forcibly put upon children but only upon those who are old enough to understand, yes, there's coercion, do it or die. But people will know they're actually worshiping the Antichrist as God. That's what Satan has wanted from the dateless past when he first rebelled and brought one third of the angels with him. Now the Bible tells us there will be a mark of the beast system. How could this happen? Well, let me tell you about a surveillance system that may surprise you it may even cause you to wonder if I could possibly be telling the truth. Project Echelon is an intelligence system that was created at the end of World War II. In 1948, the five English-speaking victors of World War II, the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, joined together in an intelligence treaty. Now, they decided that they would have surveillance unlike anything that had ever existed before. In the past, the only intelligence that was done was kind of James Bond stuff with spies and listening to radio traffic, occasionally tapping phones. But they were looking at a particular weapon system of Russia or a particular general or scientist. Project Echelon was something entirely different. Project Echelon 
was a new system based on high-speed computers that had been developed during World War II. They divided the world into five zones. Each country of the five, United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, they would listen in their zone to every radio communication, every fax, every email, all internet surfing, radio transmissions, everything, and all financial transactions as well. They would, like a gigantic electronic vacuum cleaner, pull in everything. And they're not personally interested in your discussing the latest James Bond movie with your friend, but they decided that once they had computers and the computer memory was very inexpensive and now even less expensive, they decided it was easier to collect everything but from everybody. And then they would use artificial intelligence, sophisticated computer programs, and those computer programs would use deep data mining to search for relationships between people and for particular targets. They are intercepting millions of simultaneous phone calls around the world in over 70 different languages and voice analyzing them and interpreting them. They're listening to individual voices. Every voice is unique as a fingerprint. If they have you on tape for even 30 seconds, out of millions of simultaneous phone calls, if you should ever again pick up a phone, they can pick you out instantly, analyze your phone call, and of course, if you're using a cell phone, they know exactly where you are. A lot of people use cell phones and don't realize that your cell phone is continuously communicating by radio waves to the telephone company so that they can identify the closest cell tower to you. So that if I happen to call you from across the world, they could direct that message to the closest cell tower near where you are residing or traveling. If they can figure out the three closest towers to you and triangulate, they can tell where you are within 100 feet. Now that may someday help prove if you're accused falsely of a crime that you were nowhere in the area. But it might also prove very inconvenient that the police or private investigative agency or someone else can locate you because these records are kept and retained permanently by the cell companies. We're living in a world where Project Echelon, listening to everything and storing it, how do they use it? Well, here's what they do. Each country of Project Echelon, the five large countries of the English-speaking world, prepare what they call a dictionary. The dictionary might have 10,000 words, addresses, phone numbers, names of weapon systems, or voices that are targets. If, in a conversation, you mention White House, President, bomb, airplane, then obviously the computer would, using that computer system, download that phone call to be listened to by a human analyst. The vast majority, 99.999% of phone calls, emails, are not listened to by any human being. They just don't have enough people and it would be worthless. They are not interested in your personal conversations. What they are interested is if at some point in the future you or a family member or friend becomes of interest because you apply for a high security position or perhaps you get accused of a crime or dealing with terrorism or drugs, then they can go back and look at every phone call, every email, all of your internet surfing. And in a matter of seconds, the high-speed computers can find out who all your relationships are, your friendships, who you communicated with in the last 20 years. We live in a totally transparent world. Now, most of us probably have the attitude, well, why should I care? I'm not an evil citizen. I am not involved in crime or terrorist activity. Let me give you just an example to think about. Imagine that you are living in Germany in 1935. You're a Jewish businessman. You've seen Hitler rise to power, but he was elected legally in 1933 as chancellor. You've heard a lot of anti-Semitic jokes and then talk and warnings. But Germany, after all, is the most civilized and Christian nation of Europe. Should you really care if you're not a criminal that they've put informers in your factory, in your apartment block, 
that they're tapping your phones? That they're building lists using the new computer systems to keep track of every single Jew in not only Germany, but other countries? Well, if you were a prophet, you would be worried because the things that are being done will someday in the very near future, in only three or four more years, come back to haunt and lead to the destruction of everyone you know. It's not the people of today in democratic countries that worry me so much. It's the future government that may be very anti-Christian, may be very anti-Jewish. It may be a government that does not value our democratic freedoms and rights. Today, we live in a world in which privacy and freedom are very much in danger, more so than at any other time in the history of democracies. We have satellite surveillance that is being used now by Project Echelon that can literally read the name on a golf ball from 100 miles in space. We've all seen the marvelous pictures taken by the, hel the telescope Hubble, and they are wonderful indeed. But do you know that America and these other nations have satellites that are even more powerful in some ways than Hubble? Only they're looking downward. They're not looking into outer space. And they literally, even as some of the action movies we've seen in the last few years, like Enemy of the State, Eagle Eye, can actually track an individual from space in real time. The satellite surveillance is complemented by the fact that your cell phones are not only enable you to be tracked at your location, but also all of those phone calls are monitored and could be used against you in the future. All of your emails. How many people, when they're sending a quick message out to friends, ever stop to think that all of that is on permanent record? And once you send an email, you can't take it back. Even if you erase it, it's gone. In my research, I found that many people now, by the tens and millions, are using social networking, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter. And they're making and sending messages especially young people every day and they're not thinking about how this could come back and bite them later. In my research I talk about one example hypothetically of a teenage girl. At 16 she goes out on a wonderful Christmas romance with a college senior and she tells her 57 best friends on MySpace all about her romance, her illegal drinking, perhaps misuse of substances. Six years later, she completes college with A marks. She's going to the dream job. She's on the short list. And on the last day in the last interview, they tell her they're no longer interested in her. They'll never tell her why, but that company or a detective agency they utilized went and did a deep background computer search and found this report and many others indicating very negative activity. In this kind of situation, a person could even lose the romance of their life because it's not uncommon for prospective parents to actually hire detective agencies to tr check out prospective spouses of their children. When you're on the internet, when you're surfing, understand you're being monitored not by a person mostly, but by Big Brother Project Echelon. That internet surfing tells an awful lot about you. It tells me your religious interests, your political interests. It tells me the type of reading you do. It tells me what your scientific thoughts are. It tells me almost everything, perhaps even more than your mother knows about you if I know your phone conversations, your emails, and all of your internet surfing. And it's all available. And not only to the democratic governments of those five countries of Project Echelon, but Europe has their own echelon. Russia and China have their own versions. We are being monitored. Someone once said, rather ironically but truthfully, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. In our world of mass weapons of mass destruction, and of terrorists by the hundreds of thousands who've been trained in Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps, 
who would love nothing better than to kill innocent civilians. It would be irresponsible if our governments did not use the surveillance technologies available. But I ask the question, who is watching the watchers? What kind of democratic oversight is there to make sure that this information gathered by our governments, both big brother government of Project Echelon, but also little brother governments of private detective agencies, nosy companies that want to check out the activities of their employees? Who's watching the watchers? What assurance do you have that information that should be private is not made public or shared inappropriately with others? In the European Union, they have a law of privacy that is very, very strong. That information collected for one legitimate purpose may not be exchanged or sold to another company or government for an, another purpose that was not approved. And they cannot do, exchange that information or reveal it without a court order or your permission. The United States and Canada have no such law. And therefore, I believe that one of the things we should do as concerned Christian citizens is talk to our representatives and ask them to debate this, to see what kind of democratic oversight could be established, to allow the government to protect us against the bad guys, but at the same time, protect that information from being misused. The government is now developing biometric iris scans, fingerprint scans, even facial recognition computer systems, that no matter how you disguise yourself with a beard or anything else, that they can identify you from tens of thousands of other airport passengers going through the airport. How many realize that there are over 5,000 closed circuit television cameras in the average North American airport? How many realize that on your body is probably three to five different computer chips built into your belt, your shoes, the label of your underwear, your shirt, and your pants. These radio frequency ID chips, smaller than the period at the end of a sentence, have been placed by the billions in products for the last about nine years. All the major companies and retailers now have these chips in their product. They use them for very legitimate reasons. Inventory control, anti-counterfeiting, anti-theft. But they don't turn off the radio chip when you leave the cashier. In fact, when you leave the cashier, your identity from your credit or debit card is now attached to that radio frequency ID chip. A scanner, which you can buy for $250, can actually read that 96-digit number. And if the person can hack in to the hard drives that are internet accessible, they know all about you, not just your identity, but much else. In a future program, I'm going to be talking about the radio frequency ID chips and how they could impact not only on your privacy and freedom and identity theft, but also that some future generation of this kind of technology might well be utilized by a future antichrist as global dictator to implement the mark of the beast system. We now have nanotechnology surveillance that the United States has developed. Nanotechnology means a nano is a billionth of a meter. Something that is a nano in size, it would take 10,000 of them to make up even the width of a human hair. 10,000 nano-sized particles in a row would be the size of the width of a human hair. Well, the United States has developed nano-sized technology of little flies, mosquitoes, that are virtually so small they're almost invisible to the naked eye. They use them in earthquake rescue, like in Haiti, where they drop them out of a helicopter and they are programmed, in one case, to listen for the sound of human distress breathing or crying. They then go through the cracks and find where that person is and then send a signal to allow the rescuers to find the person in need. That's a tremendously good purpose. But the United States has used a variation on this in Iraq and in Afghanistan. When they know that a particular village or a place, a building has been used in the past by terrorists, 
They simply sprinkle these virtually invisible to the naked eye sensors all around the floor, on the walls and the handles of the door. The next time a terrorist walks through there, it is impossible for him to even see or know that he's picked up maybe 100 nano sensors. They can be found from a satellite or a helicopter, and that's one of the reasons the United States was able in the last two years to wipe out almost all the al-Qaeda leadership in Iraq and many of the other insurgents. We live in a fascinating world, but it's a fascinating world in which our privacy and freedom have literally been exchanged for what I call the illusion of security. In the Christmas Day almost bombing, where a terrorist is alleged to have taken a bomb that was liquid onto a plane going to Detroit that only by the grace of God and the action of a passenger was prevented from blowing up a plane. And despite all of that surveillance, it wasn't the fact that there wasn't enough surveillance, it was that they didn't pay attention basically for political correctness. We're living in a society that is already 97% cashless with being cashless almost virtually now. We're moving first to credit cards, to debit cards, and now, as I'll share in a future program, radio frequency ID chip supercards. Do you know that most of the high-end phones that cost more than two or $300 now are being issued with radio frequency ID chips? And the plan is that in the very near future, retailers will allow you to walk through the store, pick up a pair of pants and shoes, and simply hold your phone open in front of a scanner from 25 feet away. You won't even have to open your wallet for them to take from your credit or debit card the purchase. We're living in a world where we're creating a computer data shadow that follows you every second of your life, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What's it all mean? It means that we're living in the last days. Jesus Christ is coming soon, my friend. It's time to look up because our redemption draws nigh. God bless you. My latest book is Shadow Government. It documents the global elite plan to destroy America and our freedom and privacy. It documents the surveillance society that now exists that is watching your emails, your internet surfing, and your phone. You need to understand the surveillance society that is now attacking our American freedoms. I encourage you to get Shadow Government. It'll open your eyes to the reality that now exists throughout our world today.